And the last speaker of this session is Tony Taluli from the Secretary of the Pacific Environment Program based in Samoa. And he'll speak about working towards the strategic regional strategy, strategic regional strategy for addressing invasive aquatic species. Talofa uh, Bulovinaka Malolile. Good morning, everybody. First of all, I'd like to pay, first of all, I'd like to pay my respects to the traditional um, owners of this land, uh, the Bunwawurrung people, and the Wurrung people of the Kulin Nation, and also acknowledge their elders, past and present. Thank you. Um, very happy to be here. Thank you to the organizers for arrangements to come here. Also, I'd like to acknowledge uh, what, what happened yesterday with the carbon offsetting of all our, of all our, our footprints to come here. So I'd like to congratulate John and the organizers for a carbon offset event. And also, I'd like to congratulate the, uh, John and the organizers for a plastic-free event. I think these two events or these two things are the most pressing issues for Pacific Islanders, climate change and plastic pollution. And it's very fitting that uh, this is also, that this event is a plastic free event and also a carbon offset event. Um, I bring greetings from the Director General of SPREP, uh, Mr. Kosi Latu. Um, and um, um, I'm very happy to be back here in Melbourne. I did my undergrad here in Melbourne at RMIT. And um, um, uh, it hasn't changed. Um, what I mean it hasn't changed is that it still doesn't show rugby on TV. Yeah. The World Cup is on and there's no rugby on TV. Yeah. Um, this afternoon, um, Fiji will, will be playing some other team called Georgia. And uh, I think they play at 3.15, so please excuse me for the afternoon session. I, I'll be quite busy with my colleague. I'd like to acknowledge uh, my two uh, colleagues from the Pacific, uh, Kalela Tonga from Tonga, and Ilias uh, from Fiji, um, who are also here to represent the Pacific Nation. So uh, maybe before we start, I'd like to put things into perspective as to um, you know, um, uh, the, how important the ocean is for the Pacific Islanders. How important the ocean is for the Pacific Islanders. We are 98% ocean, only 2% land. Um, large oceans. And in fact, we are coined ourselves as large ocean states. In this graph, you, we have superimposed the US and also Alaska into it, and there's still lots of room left over. About 12 million people, 8 million people are in Papua New Guinea. And we're about 30,000 islands spread all over from uh, Australia, from Asia, all the way to the Americas. Um, so the challenge of biofouling, the challenge of addressing invasive species aquatic species is a huge challenge for islanders. And uh, what I see and what I've heard through the last two days is a huge body of work that would assist us in this work. And uh, we're very happy to be part of the glow fouling family and also to address this important issue, which you've heard rightly from our, my colleague from Sri Lanka is that it's not a high priority on our agenda at the moment. Climate change is the highest priority and also plastic pollution. Let me give you a bit of context about what SPREP is and what it does. We are the Secretariat of the Pacific Regional Environment Program, very small organization that's based in Apia in Samoa. We play a lot of rugby in Samoa, as well as in other countries, and the Pacific Islanders are reliant on clean oceans for its economy. Clean oceans in terms of fisheries, in terms of tourism, agriculture, but also in terms of rugby for its economy too, because we export a lot of our players overseas. In our, um, we are one of the many regional organizations that uh, exist in the Pacific to, to support Pacific Island nations in addressing important issues. SPREP's work is to do with environment and uh, invasive aquatic species, environment issues is our mandate. And we get a mandate from our council through a strategic action plan, which puts the communities right at the top 
And I was very happy with uh, Graham's uh, presentation on Tuesday, where we had, he really focused on the values of people and culture when addressing invasive species. So we put values of people and culture as a foundation of all the work that we do, recognizing that climate change, climate change is the main priority focus, but also addressing biodiversity and also waste and pollution. And we recognize that invasive aquatic species is a pollution issue, is an environmental issue. Lots of you in this room are members of SPREP, so we actually, I actually work for you. Um, and um, um, we work across all Pacific Island countries. We also draw not only from our membership, but also draw our mandate and our work from the Pacific leadership uh, through the Pacific Island Forum that meets every year. And through this forum, they have also recognized the importance of climate change and the importance of waste and pollution to this idea of a blue Pacific continent, blue Pacific narrative about addressing issues in a blue, blue scheme. And this issue that we're talking about this week of how biofouling is a threat to this blue Pacific narrative. What I'll talk to you about for the rest of the talk is about the work that we are doing, and there's not much work compared to what you've all done and what I've heard about addressing invasive aquatic species, but moving in the direction of developing a strategic plan, strategic direction for addressing aquatic species. I will talk about uh, who is involved, who are the players, what projects that we are involved, particularly to do with the global fouling, and to John, and to Lilia, and to Violetta, Violetta. Um, and also what are some of the other projects that we're doing, but it's also keeping in mind that we need to address this in a holistic way, in an integrated approach. Because uh, as we know, and we've heard the global filing project is an integrated approach. The work that we do has to be an integrated approach to addressing this blue Pacific narrative, this blue Pacific continent. We have a lot of frameworks. In fact, in the, in the region, we have too many frameworks, too many, too many narratives, and it's now about trying to consolidate all these narratives, all these, all these things into one into an integrated approach, integrated um, invasive aquatic species approach. So invasive species is a priority for Pacific Islanders. It's embedded into our action plan. It is a focal point in our strategic plan for 2017 to 2026. The vision is to significantly reduce the social economic ecological impacts of invasive species, not only on land, but on water, ecosystems, and control or eradicate priority species. So that's clearly the direction that we take. The framework in which we do this is in, is in two ways. There is a regional guideline to address, invas to, to, to address invasive species in the Pacific. This guideline has been in existence since 2000 and Eight. We also have, under that guideline, as a subset of that, is the strategy to address ship-related invasive species through hull fouling and through ballast water. This was before we started to do any work on hull fouling. And when, the, when we were doing work on ballast water, we did recognize that for a small island states such as the Pacific, we have very little, um, I think that the, not very little, but the more impact is from hull fouling than from ballast water because we are net exporters of ballast, but we have a lot of pleasure vessels that come to our countries, a lot of development, a lot of dredging materials that bring this threat of invasives through hull fouling. We have an existing strategy since 2006, but I think that it needs to be tweaked and updated to meet the emerging issues that are being talked about through the, through, throughout this week. Who are the leaders in this space? We have two organizations. 
Many of you are more familiar with the community, Pacific community, the SBC, but also SPREP does and plays an important role in addressing invasive species in the region. It's quite split. So the terrestrial invasives are handled by SPREP. The biosecurity, the fisheries is handled by SBC, Pacific community. Vessel related in terms of hull fouling and ballast water comes under the mandate of SPREP. So these are the two parties that are playing this leadership. Not only just these two, but together with a lot of partners and players that are in the room today. In terms of institutionalization and how this is operationalized, this is through a couple of networks. Invasive species is well organized in the Pacific in terms of uh, partnerships. We have the Pacific Invasive Partnership, we have the Pacific Invasive Initiative, PII, but we also have the Pacific Invasive Learning Network, which is a network made up of practitioners in country, and there's a network in, in, in almost all the countries that uh, meet regularly and, and share ideas and share what they're doing. We also have this new arrangement called the PRISMS. It's the Pacific Regional, everything starts with the Pacific first. So we call it the Pacific Regional Invasive Species Management Support Services. And what that does is that that tries to put uh, um, assistance to scale up on ground activities to share. So if there's an, so if there's an idea that, that needs support, we have these prisms that would provide assistance to that. And I see value in the people here to provide or to be part of these prisms, to be part of the support services to the region. We have a battlers, specific invasive battlers uh, communication scheme that uh, is then sending out messages of all invasive work to do with both the land and the ocean. So where does this sit in and how do we, how do we engage and how do we funnel this? Well, the first is that we have been fortunate enough to, uh, to, be, to get funding from the GEF. And I must add that uh, SPREP is a um, implementing entity, implementing uh, is an accredited organization for the Climate Change Green Climate Fund and also for the Adaptation Fund. We also are in working very closely with uh, Jeff to see how we can become also an accredited entity for the Jeff. We have been, and we also have been, uh, have been fortunate to receive funding from the Jeff for this invasive species project, very um, innovative name, the Jeff Six Invasive Species Project, that covers four countries, uh, Tonga, Niue, the Marshall Islands, and Tuvalu. And it's, and it's addressing very small funding um, and only one of those countries have identified aquatic invasives as a priority, and that's uh, Tuvalu. Um, it's got four main, four main focal areas, and it's really to strengthen the framework in countries for addressing invasives. Eh? We see also that the Globe Filing Project will, will, um, will, will, will implement and will um, collaborate closely with the GEF-6 Invasive Project. As you've heard earlier, earlier on from John, is that SPREP is a lead, well, we are a regional coordinating organization for the Globe Filing Project. We have two countries that are lead, lead participating countries, Fiji and Tonga, and my colleagues are here. Uh, you've heard that we've had the regional inception workshops for the Pacific, as well as two national workshops. I'd like to thank um, uh, Peter from Australia and also Graham from Newa for assisting in these projects and the, and the Globe Fouling team for enabling this, this activity to happen. We have also, we talked a lot about climate change and how Globe Fouling, or how Fouling rather, will enable the reduction of uh, drag. Um, addressing Fouling will, will reduce the drag and we heard a lot about yesterday about the, the uh, coefficients for drag. Um, I understood most of it yesterday, not all. Um, the, the Pacific is fortunate also to be part of this 
global network, global maritime network, uh, the GMNs as, as they call it, uh, where there are five networks that have been set up by the International Maritime Organization through funding from the EU to address and to get information on what it is happening out there in terms of decarbonization of the transport sector. Uh, the project has got a few more months to go and it'll be extended hopefully until the end of 2020, uh, where it's involving seven countries in the Pacific with two uh, with um, offices in two countries, in Fiji as the main center, and also in Samoa. It's looking at a very ambitious, and the word for the Pacific when it addresses climate is ambitious targets. It's looking at very ambitious targets in, by reducing the transport carbon footprint by 40% by 2030, and looking at addressing 100% by 2050. That's been a very contentious uh, wording. So we're very, I think we're looking at these two projects to, to, really to really synergize and to work with the global fouling and to work with you all on how to assist the Pacific in addressing how by fouling. There are other projects that are happening as well in this integrated approach that, we, that we're looking at. What looks on the board looks like a lot, looks like a lot of work with a lot of money, but if you spread it over five, six years, if you spread it over 30 million square kilometers, if you, if you spread it over 21 countries, it doesn't go very far. We have a lot of assistance from the European Union, from Australia, from France, from Japan, and from the GEF to address various aspects of pollution and waste and climate change in its integrated approach where invasive species is part of the conversation. So that's a brief summary of what we're doing to move towards this strategic approach to addressing invasive core species. And I'll leave you with this slide, and thank you very much. Thank you.